because of color revolution. You've seen wave and waves of color revolution coming to Hong Kong since the 2014 Occupy Central movement. That would be in the Obama administration. Um, and then in the 2019 anti-extradition um, bill movement. And it you can see that the scale is larger. There are more people and the, the funding is, is more, there are more money coming in. The degree is more violent, the, the violence more, the degree of violence is more serious. And you see waves and waves of this color revolution coming in to topple the government, to stabilize the, 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 the government and to make sure it cannot rule. There is a legal vacuum in Hong Kong. The Article 23 has always been in Hong Kong and unenacted. Un there is a legal vacuum. So in order to cover that or fill that legal vacuum, the National People's Congress has to make a move. So under the Chinese constitution, under Article 57, uh, the NPC has the ultimate sovereign power to, uh, in, to um, decide matters and do all acts and things for the People's Republic of China. And under Article 58 of the Chinese Constitution, um, also the NPC, which is the National People's Congress, and the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, both of them has the highest legislative power of the country. So with respect to legislation and issuing um, writing laws, the National People's Congress Standing Committee and the National People's Congress, of course, has the ultimate power. So the constitutionality and the legal legitimacy of the upcoming National Security Law of Hong Kong is derived from Article 57 and Article 58 of the Chinese Constitution. Of course, the, the people's feelings are divided. For those who come out to protest and conduct riots, there are, a, although they are a minority, but there are people. Now, those people would not like the law. The law is to restrict and to restrain their conduct. The law is there to prohibit them from carrying on what they have been doing. Um, their wiretourist activities and their illegal activities. So those people that the law is target, those people that the law is target will not be happy. But the great majority of Hong Kong citizens who are not rioters, who are ordinary citizens who want to have a decent living, who wants to go to work, go to study, do their businesses and have a good income, those people would appreciate. Um, particularly those um, retail shops that have been um, under uh, tremendous pressures and some of them have been um, demolished or otherwise damaged because of these riotous activities. Those people would be appreciative of these new coming national security law. No, definitely not. The, one, the basic law is still here. Strongly, fully enforced, fully honored. I mean, the basic law, every article of it are here. They have, uh, we have our own legal system. We have our own administrative system. We have our own legislative system. Um, we have our own uh, separate system of banking. We have our own currency. Uh, we have our own shipping laws and, and MOT laws. And we have our freedom of expression of rights protection. Uh, in full chapters. So I would tell ordinary Hong Kong citizens, you live ordinary days. You, your days would not be any different. Um, but for those who wanted to say or vouch for separatism, for those who want to vouch for uh, succession and sedition, I think they would have a concern.